thank you very much for coming uh, in such a short notice. Uh, what I'm doing at an individual level, though I'm one person, but what I'm doing is for India and for Tibet. And therefore, this uh, press conference is really important. What I'm going to speak here today is about the Himalayan regions of India and its relationship with Tibet. And for the past 66 days up until today, the travels I've been doing all across the Himalayas from Ladakh up to Arunachal are essential in rekindling the relationship between Tibet and the five Indian states in the Himalayas. I've been on a long speaking tour. I've started from Ladakh, uh, particularly its uh, capital, Leh, uh, from 17th August uh, this year. And since then, I've been traveling every single day. Uh, I traveled in different places in Ladakh. I went to Nubra, Kargil, Zanskar, uh, Nyoma, and of course, uh, Leh and Choklamsar. Then from there, I went to uh, Kelong in Garsha Valley, which is Laho, and then Spiti, then so many different villages and towns in, in, in Kinnor, and further down, then I came towards Uttarakhand. I traveled in Garwal Valley and also Kumaon uh, regions. And But because I didn't want to trouble, uh, cause any trouble in Nepal, I avoided that and came down to uh, UP and Bihar. I traveled through Lucknow, Banaras, Patna, and Siliguri. And I arrived here uh, late last night. And I'm going to be now traveling through uh, different places in Sikkim. And from here, I will go to Kalimpong, Dajiling, Mirik, Sonada, Karsiong, and back to Sikkim. Uh, for, uh, sorry, uh, Siliguri. And uh, my last leg of this uh, Himalayan journey will, will I will start from Kohati, uh, Itanagar, different places in Arunachal Pradesh. Now this, this is such a long travel that anybody has ever done, and on one stretch, it's an ambitious one. It's an important one. It's ambitious because this is one man traveling through all these places to rekindle the traditional, cultural, and also political relationship between the Indian Himalayan states and Tibet. I continue to say Tibet and refuse to say what usually the Indian media say, China border. I avoid it because I belong to the Tibetan family. And traditionally, Gantok, Sikkim, has always uh, had a very beautiful, strong ties with Tibet, not with China. China never had any borders in these areas. And just above from here, MG Road, and from there, the road towards Natula, it's, what is it? It's Tibet Road. So there's no sign of China here at all. So therefore, I don't understand why Indian media continues to say China border, China border, or Sino-Indian uh, border. Because we have IDPP, Indo-Tibetan Border Police. And when, they, when we have such important infrastructures, such an important institution within India, IDPP, then why, why does the media continue to say, uh, you know, Sino-Indian border? Now, it may sound idealistic in, in uh, rekindling and talking about Tibet, but I would like to say the present and temporary trade interest is nothing compared to the long-term interest of India, the Republic of this country. India never had any borders with China at all in the past. And traveling through the Himalayas from Ladakh up until today, I haven't met a single person 
who said that there was any border, Chinese border on the border, on, on, in the Himalayas. I've met with old people who traveled to Tibet when Tibet was free and independent. There are still many people who remember that they used to go to Tibet. Unka shadi hote the, unki vepar hote the, aur unki adi parivar abhi bhi Tibet mein hai, abhi bhi hai. So that kind of, you know, real evidence of, uh, you know, real life stories people tell me. And also all across, I've seen monasteries, I've seen villages, I've seen trade uh, towns all across the Himalayas. Uh, <clears throat> so through these, what I'm doing at the moment is wherever I travel, I've been uh, screening a film uh, called Escape of the Dalai Lama from Tibet. This film tells the story of Tibet. This film tells the story of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, how he had to escape his own country and come to India. And for the past 64 years, he's been living in India as a refugee. This film was first made in 2015 and it was made by Rang Raids, films, uh, a film company based in Bombay. And it was made for a TV channel called Epic. And it was broadcast in the year uh, 2017. But because many of the people in the Himalayas, they've never seen this. So therefore, I am doing a film travel. I've been taking this film with me every single day and showing it in so many different places. I travel with me a screen, a projector, a laptop, and, uh, you know, seeking local logistics and support. I've been screening this film in so many villages and towns and cities and monasteries, and especially remote regions uh, like the nomadic regions in, uh, in, uh, in Spiti, in Kinor. And also, uh, for example, in Uttarakhand, I went to Darchula. Uh, and Darchula is, is a very interesting and strategic place. It's a small town in Pithoragar district and to the east lies uh, the Kali Nadi and there's a bridge over it. When you cross the bridge, you come to Nepal. And in Nepal, they have created Darjula as a se separate district. <coughs> and there in Darjula, we screened this film. And later this film was shown on the local cable TV network. So people on the other side, the Nepal, uh, Nepalese citizens, they were also able to see it. And this, something like this had never happened before. So rekindling this relationship and uh, in that, will, uh, in that uh, uh, small town, uh, Darchula, there are many people who came down from the hills. Just like uh, here, for example, uh, Gantok is one place where there are people from the remote regions who are in the up in the mountains. So they have a base here. Like that. So uh, there are people who traditionally were mixed local uh, population and also Tibetans. And Sikkim is not, uh, not in that way very different. Sikkim always had, of course, its own uh, ethnic uh, uh, population who had always lived here, but at the same time used to have that kind of ties with people from Tibet. And f through Natula, Tibet Road, Kantok, down to Kalimpong, Dajiling, all the way to Siliguri, and connecting right to Calcutta used to be the trade link road between Tibet India and Tibet used to send wool through this road through Calcutta all the way to the UK. That was our traditional relationship. So I got different kinds of responses from different uh, regions in all these Himalayan areas. When we screened this film in Ladakh, people in Ladakh they were saying that for them, His Holiness the Dalai Lama is like, like their God, he's their Guru. 
They said, but when we never knew that His Holiness the Dalai Lama had to undergo such difficulty in his such young age when he was just 24, he had to leave his own country and the difficulties he faced through the journey as seen in the film. They were saying that they were ashamed to watch this, not knowing what their guru had to undergo. So this film is in that way revelatory for many people in the Himalayas. When we went through uh, Spiti, Kinor, people over there, you know, their responses were a little different. They were saying, of course, we understand the difficulties His Holiness and, and uh, His Holiness and, and, and Tibet had to undergo. But because His Holiness is now in India, because of His uh, grace, uh, they were saying that the people in these uh, valleys, uh, both Sikkim, uh, sorry, uh, Spiti and also uh, uh, Kinor, they were saying their religion, culture, their language has been preserved because His Holiness's grace and His guidance. So they were saying they are so grateful to His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. So, so different kind of responses. And then, because I avoided Nepal, I passed through uh, Lucknow, uh, Banaras, uh, Patna. So the responses from UP and Bihar, Bihar were very different. It's not a Tibetan response, not a Buddhist response. They were reminded of Lord Buddha and Gandhiji when we screened uh, this film. Uh, on His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So they were saying, as a lag raki, Gautam Buddha ne jo karuna ki shiksha diya, aur jo ahimsa ki mark pe jo uh, Mahatma Gandhi ji chale the, wo aaj parampavan Dalai Lama ji usi raste pe hai. So they were, in a, in a way, they looked at His Holiness in a very different way. Uh, but I think, you know, these were, really interesting public responses to the film and and the journey that I am leading. Uh, my first screening in this region was in Siliguri, in, in Salugara. I was able to screen this film in a, in a monastery called Segu Monastery. And uh, there were many people uh, from in that area. So they were uh, Nepalese or Tamang or Sherpa or Bengalis and also local Indians. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, in, throughout this journey, I will be doing more such screenings. Um, and um, I'm already excited that I'm coming to a very different place, uh, different kind of responses, different languages here. Uh, so yes, so these are some of the observations. And after this, my last leg of the journey will be in Arunachal Pradesh. Um, and I'm already uh, excitedly waiting for uh, that kind of a journey. Uh, from, from, from Sikkim, I will go to Kalimpong, Tajiling, Mirik, uh, Sonada, Karshang, and finally uh, finish this part in uh, Siliguri. Uh, and because I'm, I'm also a, a writer, I write poetry and stories, um, whenever possible I try to do uh, either a poetry reading session or uh, conduct uh, creative writing sessions for schools, uh, students, or maybe college students also. Uh, I've been able to do in some of the places, and I'm hoping to do at least one uh, here in uh, Kentuck. Um, um, I'm not new to this city. I've, I've been, there, been here a number of times, and um, because I'm also a member of the Tibetan Youth Congress, uh, we had had one uh, big conference here many years ago, and my friend Sonam Lai is standing beh uh, behind all of you. He's, he's always been there uh, as a member of the Tibetan Youth Congress. And uh, this press conference is also being put together by Tibetan Youth Congress. And my friend from TYC is here already with me. And this evening, we are going to show this uh, film that I've been talking about uh, at Chogosum uh, Hall on the Namnang Road this evening at 6 o'clock. Um, so, in conclusion, um, uh, through media, uh, my message uh, to the people of Sikkim and people across, the, across this country is that we must start to stand up against China. China 
However, we try to appease them, which had been India's policy for a very long time. India thought that China is going to be our friend. They may uh, make some investments in India. Nothing is that is going to happen. China's ambition is not a friendly relationship with India. China's ambition is to topple the United States and rule the world. And we should now, now be able to see this through the Galwan Valley massacre. It was a message to India. Uh, and because they were looking at India as someone who is doing, uh, creating an alliance with with United States. India will make her own political decisions with or without China's pleasure or displeasure. And we, uh, I, as, as someone who is born in India, I would like to say that we must be strong um, and appeasing China in any way does not help us. In fact, we may continue to be in that Hindi Chini bye bye, uh, you know, illusion. Um, and therefore, we must continue to stand strong. Uh, when China recently uh, censured uh, our vice president's uh, visit to Itanagar, I felt that was completely uncalled for from China's side. Because in the month of July, when Chinese President Xi Jinping visited uh, Kongpo uh, region, Kongpo Ningchi region in Tibet, and also in Lhasa, he openly uh, gave signs to India that he was preparing for a major expansion in, in the Tibet region. India did not make any criticism of that. And therefore, what China did recently, uh, criticizing uh, our vice president's visit to Itanagar, was completely uncalled for. It's an act of bully, and India must stand up against that. And Arunachal Pradesh has and is and will always be a part of India. China has nothing to do with this. And we, as Tibetans, we know how. Arunachal Pradesh became a part of India after the McMahon Treaty of 1914. And India, India's claim over Arunachal Pradesh is based on that important historical document. And it has nothing to do with China at all. So therefore, uh, we must stand up uh, against the bully. Um, you know, I, I hugely respect the way uh, in a dignified manner, India has always, uh, you know, worked out its uh, foreign policies. Uh, but when it comes to uh, China, uh, I, I would like to say that we have to be a little stronger. Thank you. So this is all I have to say. Um, but if there is any questions, comments, then of course I'm, I'm happy to answer. Um, at the moment, um, uh, Rumtek Monastery, I'm going there tomorrow, and uh, I'll go to Namchi, uh, Manang, uh, uh, then Rabangla. Uh, these are the confirmed places, but of course, you know, I'm, I'm a very small person, I don't have huge network of people. I depend on individual f friends who would, you know, take me to places or connect to those kind of places. So I'm in the process of doing it, and I remain very flexible. I'm you know, I can travel at any time, morning, night, whatever time, and, and be there, and also be able to screen these films in the in the in the border regions. For how long you here? I am expecting to be uh, in Sikkim for about a week's time, and within that, I'll try to travel as much possible. That uh, an important policy would to help the the Tibetan community across the world. To get the freedoms from the Chinese, I wouldn't like to think that any uh, that that India's policy is in any way aimed for Tibet's freedom. I wouldn't like to think that way. But India keeping its border borders, giving every protection possible, and standing up to China will firstly help India to be more protected and avoid any questions from China on India's sovereignty. And therefore, when India is protected,
Tibet will naturally be uh, in a better position. I think one of the mistakes India made was right in the beginning how India thought that let Tibet go under China, we are going to have a friendly relationship with, uh, uh, with China. So India thought that let Tibet go, we will be friends with China. That I think was a uh, you know, wrong footing uh, right uh, to start with. Hindi Chini Bai Bai was such a wrong uh, step uh, for India. Uh, because when you when your neighboring country loses its freedom, when then it puts you on a defensive position. Then you have to defend yourself all the all the time, and that too against a country like China, who has an expansionist policy. Just the regular Pradhan Mantri Modi ji aksar kaise the ki wo ek vistar vad ki niti apna rahe hain. और उस विस्तारवादी नीति को ना कोई भविष्य है ना उनका अभी अभी का वक्त में कोई ऐसा उनका कोई ऐसा मतलब होगा तो आई थिंक यू नो डिफेंडिंग इंडियाज बॉर्डर पोजिशंस एंड स्पेशली आफ्टर ट्रेवलिंग टू ऑल दीज बॉर्डर एरियाज आई हैव रियलाइज that the people in the border regions have very little or no political awareness and therefore i felt that this political uh, uh, you know situation that is prevailing across the himalayas i felt this film screening that i am taking to all these places has been proved useful to local people at least they know uh, that that was the history behind the himalayas because there are many youngsters who had not what seen what is your expectations from the government of india same that india should be stronger in its positions against china and if if india does it that will naturally help tibet's position up until now although we have indo tibetan border police india's position even today is this that tibet autonomous region is a part of part of people's republic of china so this uh, is is been india's long term policy and if there is a you know review of this policy it will hugely help both india and also tibet so do you think the tibetan government in the is also taking up the same issues in the international forum tibetan government in exile uh has certain limitations because it it is an exile government functioning within india um and there and also because if when uh, his holiness the dalai lama when uh, heads of the tibetan government in exile when they travel to foreign countries uh, they have to be careful with many other places i am speaking as an individual openly and frankly and i would like to think that the future of tibet is a free and independent country and that will recreate tibet as a safe buffer zone between india and china and that is in the long term interest of india not the present situation where china is been has been ruling over tibet for 70 years and now threatening india india wouldn't like to be in this difficult position forever so do you think the dalai lama uh, acceptance of her Chinese incursion in the Tibet. Now, his now His Holiness Dalai Lama has never accepted Chinese incursions, invasions, or 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 occupation. His Holiness has been saying that in the in the past Tibet was a free and independent country. Now, his proposal for autonomy was based on his future vision for Tibet, where he said that in the future, if the Chinese government gives an an agreeable mutually acceptable uh, autonomous arrangement for tibetan people within the three provinces of tibet his holiness said perhaps we can think about it but he had never accepted chinese occupation of tibet do you have also the communications then with your counterparts in the tibet 
Tibetan people inside Tibet is 6 million and Tibetans outside Tibet is 1,50,000. So we are a very small minority. Majority of our people are still inside Tibet. They are the ones who are leading the freedom struggle. They are our inspiration and we listen to them. And we have as people uh, across the Himalayas, we have our own unique communication of trust and also we have the history which binds us together and the common vision of a free and independent Tibet. Uh, speaking of communication, I think lately there has been some form of protest with regards to Beijing 2022, the year yes. Olympics. Right? Yes. Uh, across the border also we have been seeing that. Yes. What is your take on the scene? Are you also in protest with the scene? Is this one of the forms of uh, addresses that you are trying to make with uh, regards to the events that has been unfolding lately? Yeah, I support, uh, you know, uh, ban 2020 Beijing. Uh, uh, ban 2022 Beijing is a campaign internationally coordinated and it's not just Tibetans. There are a number of other peoples who are under Chinese occupation like the uh, Muslim people of, the, of East Turkestan, uh, Southern Mongolia, Manchuria, then uh, Hong Kong and Taiwanese are also protesting against 2022 uh, Beijing Winter Olympics. That's mainly because such an internationally acclaimed, internationally respected events like that, when it continues to happen in Beijing, it seems they are completely ignorant and disrespectful to all the atrocities these peoples and countries are facing. Taiwan is facing almost a kind of a preeminent Chinese invasion. How can the world continue to uh, have this such kind of Winter Olympics in, in China as if they don't know, as if they don't care? So therefore, protests against Beijing 2022 is happening. And it started from the United States, it's going all across Europe. It may not even happen.